Hey everybody, welcome to Garden Time with Belle. I am starting my day like I do often inside my greenhouse. I've got my cup of coffee and I have a very long to-do list. I'm not sure how much of this I'll be able to knock out today, but over the next couple of days, it is full speed ahead. As you might know, if you've seen any of my prior videos, you know that one of my garden goals this year was to try my hand at starting most of my veggies, herbs, and flowers from seed. And boy, did I jump in the deep end on that goal. Uh, but it has been so much fun. And so today, I've got a lot of things still in the greenhouse that need to get out of the greenhouse and into the landscape. I'm hoping to put things in my raised bed garden. And then I also have some things going in some of my perennial beds. Um, so I hope to take you along on that adventure. So I grow uh, plants and gardening in zone 6B here in mid Missouri. And for those of you in my zone, you know, it's mid to late May. So it is full speed ahead, time to get everything out in the garden. And I'm, you know, just reaching the point where if I don't get these things out in the landscape pretty soon, I'm going to miss my opportunity. So I worked really hard to raise these babies from seed and I need to get them going. Uh, in a little bit, I'll turn the camera around and show you what the inside of the greenhouse looks like today. It looks very different today than it did just a few days ago because uh, I did a fun little thing uh, this past weekend. I invited a bunch of my friends who support my Garden Time with Bell uh, YouTube channel and also just are interested in uh, gardening themselves. I invited them to a little garden party and part of the party was a scavenger hunt slash pop quiz where they got to walk around the property and they had to find certain items and count certain things. And then when they brought back their... Um, papers from their little walkabout, um, they were able to pick from a selection of things that I had grown from seed. So everybody went home with Celosia, which is a beautiful uh, plant that I'm going to be planting out today. It's a pretty flower. Uh, I'll put a picture of the Celosia Asian garden variety on the screen. Uh, they got to go home with some maverick geraniums that I grew from seed. And they got to, thank goodness, take away a bunch of my tomato starts. Oh my goodness. I had such great germination for my tomatoes this year. I don't know about you, but if you grow things from seed, if you're like me, I hate throwing anything away. So my germination rate was so great that I divided some of those cells, potted things up, and I ended up having, golly, probably 100 tomato plants, maybe not that many, maybe 80. And so I was delighted that my friends could take some tomatoes that I grew from seed and put them in their own garden. So it's looking a lot different in here. And it's been fun to watch the transformation of what things are growing in the greenhouse, what has already left and been planted out and what's left to be done. So yeah, so that's what I am planning for today's project. Um, I thought I might share with you all in addition to uh, taking some of these plants out of the greenhouse and planting them, I think I'm first going to tackle putting them out of the greenhouse and planting them. I think I'm first going to tackle putting things in the raised bed. I'm going to be putting in some stock uh, flowers, some cut flowers there that I have seedlings of, but I'm also going to direct sow some seeds. You know, zinnias are the way to go. They're probably one of the first flowers that I grew from seed. They're so easy to grow. The seeds are nice and big, so you can see where you're placing them. They just don't take much effort at all. And so this year, I like to switch up the varieties of zinnias. And I had seen this particular variety, Pink Senorita. This variety of seed, uh, I had seen these flowers probably two or three years ago, and I thought, okay, I've got to put that on the list. This is a Baker Creek uh, heirloom seed variety. So uh, what I love about it is that they're kind of fringy. They're not the typical lobed petals. They're kind of curly and fringy. See if I can get that on the screen for you to see. So I thought, oh, these will be fun. And of course... We all admire Erin with Floret Flower Farms, and she's just spectacular. And she has produced, 
her own seed. Her but I am going to grow precious metals. You can see that. So they're kind of a dusty color, but apparently she says that they really shimmer um, and are gorgeous. So I thought, why not direct sow some of these? Here's something interesting I'm going to try. You know, I'm all for adventures, trying stuff for the first time. I love experimentation in the garden. And so I think I'm going to try something that I saw online not long ago. And I, she's a YouTuber and I, I'll, I'll look it up and provide a link to her YouTube channel. Um, she's a cut flower farmer and I'm learning a lot from her. I'm sorry. I can't remember the name right now, but anyhow. Here is what she recommends when you sow zinnia seeds. So I'm going to be sowing these seeds out in my raised bed garden. And of course, out here we have, you know, tons of birds like everybody does and critters. And what she does is she places the seed in the ground. She waters them in lightly. Then she places a frost cloth over the top of those seeds and waters down the frost cloth. She leaves that covering over her zinnia seeds until the seedlings, I think she said in her video, are like three or four inches tall before she removes that frost cloth. And I think the idea behind it is that if you have birds that like to come in and pick out seed from your garden or little baby seedlings as they're coming up can be attracted to different critters and they want to eat those, that's a way of protecting your hard work. So I thought, I've never done that before. Why not just give it a try and see how that works? So I'm going to try that with these varieties of zinnia. And then this is also something I'm going to direct sow and bring you along for pole beans, uh, climbing green beans. And I am using Johnny's seeds. Um, and I'm going to probably botch the name, but I think the variety of pole beans I'm going to grow here, they're the Seychelles variety. Uh, let's see what it says here in terms of how to sow. So after danger of frost, of course, it's mid to late May, so that's perfectly fine. It's nice and warm. Sow seeds around the base of poles, about one inch deep, and set about four inches apart, or sow seeds three inches apart in a row and erect a trellis. I will be growing these like I do every year uh, in a long skinny raised bed. I'll show you that in a little bit. And I have cattle, a cattle panel arch and they'll grow up beautifully. I prefer to grow pole beans because they just do better for me. Um, and they're super easy to harvest. They grow up my trellis and you just stand and harvest, harvest, and you can see them. You can see the green beans much easier than bush beans. Nothing wrong with that. I know a lot of people love jade. It's a great bush bean, green bean variety. Uh, so anyhow, um, but I have better luck in my garden. So I'm going to grow these pole beans. So that's what I'm thinking about doing today and want to take you along for that. But before we head out into the raised bed garden and put in some of my seedlings and sow these seeds, uh, I'm going to turn the camera around and just show you what the inside of the greenhouse looks like. So I just wanted to give you a quick peek, a sneak peek at uh, how different the inside of my greenhouse looks than it did just a couple of weeks ago. Uh, this entire bench and the floor was filled with seed starting trays and all those plants are planted out. And this upper shelf here that runs the length of my 16 foot greenhouse was just jam full of seed tray after seed tray. So I'm not going to show you everything in here right now because I just want to show you the things that I'm going to, uh, just the stock flowers that I'm going to put out in uh, my raised bed garden here in just a minute, take you along. So I grew uh, three varieties of stock. Venus cherry, um, salmon pink, and I think down here are my little tiny baby ones. Um, Venus, yeah, Venus pink, Venus cherry, and salmon pink. I mean, look, that's pretty sad. It's pretty small, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna give it a go. Um, and then you know, you've got this really beautiful, healthy looking one. So, anyhow, that's where I'm headed next. I'll take you out into the garden. We'll get the stock planted and those zinnia seeds and green bean seeds. So I better get started. 
Okay, so first thing, let's do the easy part first. Uh, sewing these uh, green beans, the Seychelles variety. And as I mentioned earlier, they're gonna go in this long skinny raised bed and then they will grow up, up to the top of the arch and make it really easy for harvesting. And again, just some specs on this. Uh, one inch deep, about uh, three inches apart. So that's my plan. I've got my drip uh, irrigation set up right down the center. So my plan is to plant my beans right down close to that drip line. All right, time to get started. So I've got my, I went ahead and just uh, dug a little one inch trench and just gonna open up my seed packet and follow the directions. And Johnny Seeds, uh, of course, is what I'm using. Um, they are phenomenal in the information they provide on the packet. So just let that be your guide on how deep you want to um, plant. So nice, big, easy peasy. So three inches apart. So I am going to just eyeball it. And just go down this row. It could not be easier three inches apart. I'm going to cover these with about an inch of soil. And that job is done. Um, I should look and see what it says in terms of germination. How many days? Let's see if it says this on the seed packet. It does not. All right, so I will look that up. I think a germination rate is like seven to ten days, but that's it. So it could not be easier. And this is really high quality soil in here that I amend every year. So I'm going to just cover those seeds up. Super simple, could not be easier with the surrounding soil, like so. Pat them in so that we have good contact between the seeds and the soil. Maybe a little bit more on the edges here. And you can see I've got my drip line. And it is going to keep those seeds nice and moist uh, until they germinate. I'll come in here and probably hand water for the next week just to make sure once they get up and going, they can be on regular drip with everything else. So that's it. I'll do the other end and we'll be done. So this is the raised bed I am going to put my stock starts, uh, the flowers that I started in the greenhouse, and they're going to go in the front part of this bed. And then the zinnia seed, the senorita variety from uh, Baker Creek, that's going to go in this part of the bed, the seeds. I'm going to sow those. Just so happens I've got some pepper plants in the very front part of this bed. Uh, the lunchbox variety, the cute little ones that you can buy in the store for snacking. I think I've got an orange variety variety and a red variety. So anyways, just wanted you to see what was already in here. So my idea is my stock seedlings that I showed you earlier, I'm going to pop them in the front bed around these drip emitters and they say stock can be planted six to 12 inches apart. And so I think I've only got a dozen decent starts. So I'm just going to fill in this area sort of wherever I think. So I'll just dig a little hole, put some biotone in the bottom, the starter fertilizer, as I always do with any plant, whether it is a vegetable plant, a flower plant, herbs, biotone goes in the hole to start it off. So that's what I'll do first. Then you'll see me move over here. I've already moved away some of the leaf litter, uh, which I grind up in the fall and dress all my beds. I moved it out of the way where I'm going to plant the zinnia seeds because I want to make sure my zinnias get in good contact with the soil. And then I'll put the leaf litter back over the top, which acts as wonderful mulch as well as organic matter. 
It helps improve your soil over time. I'm a big proponent of that. Um, if any of you have been following Joe Lample through his uh, career, Joe Gardner, uh, I, I'll put his link in the description below. He is also somebody that grinds up leaves at the end of the season and dresses all of his beds as well. Oh my goodness. Well, okay. A buzzer just flew over my head. I wonder if the camera got that. I hope it did. Woo! That was a that was a surprise. Okay, time to get the stock in and the zinnia seed sown. So as I mentioned, I am going to plant my zinnia seeds, the Senorita variety from Baker Creek, uh, in this section of the bed. My stock is already here. You saw me do that. And now I'm going to put in my zinnia seeds. Zinnias don't need to go any deeper than about a quarter of an inch. So all I did, let me bring the camera in a little closer, maybe you can see, is I just roughed up the soil with my trowel and followed my drip line all through this part of the bed. And I'm just planning to lightly sow my seed and then barely cover it. And uh, within, I think, about seven days, we should get some germination. the last bed that I'm going to be uh, sowing seeds in today. Uh, this bed actually has carrots on this side and radishes, which I've let, obviously, this one go to seed, to flowering. Isn't that pretty, though? So uh, I'll probably be harvesting all these radishes within the next week or so, because as soon as it gets warm here, uh, boy, they get bitter and super spicy and hot. So um, anyhow, just wanted you to see what was already here. I have no problem mixing veggies and herbs and flowers. I, you know, I like to grow all kinds of things. So why not? You know, uh, the flowers I use for cut flowers and they bring beauty to the garden. Um, and not that the carrots aren't beautiful because look at that foliage, but I like to mix it up. So I'm going to try the method that I told you about earlier, where I'm going to sow the seed, water it in gently, put some frost cloth on top water it in on top of the frost cloth, pin it down, and see if that makes a difference. Um, I'm going to try it, and then I'll compare this to how I just did the direct sow method uh, in the other bed. The frost cloth method, I believe the rationale behind that is that it prevents anything from flying in and scooping up your little baby seedlings uh, or anything like that. We don't have a lot of critter pressure because as you can see, and I've showed you before, uh, we have a six foot tall fence around my raised bed garden, but you know, birds can fly in. I don't have the top covered. So anyways, I just thought, 
you know, I love to experiment. Let's try it. And then we'll do a little comparison at the end of the season and see if it made any difference at all. So that's what I'm going to do next. And then this project for the raised bed garden should be complete for today. What a fun morning in the garden, getting my stock seedlings planted out as well as sowing some zinnia seed. You came along with me today and got to see me do that and I really appreciate it. So you saw me sow two different kinds of zinnia, the Senorita variety and the Floret variety called Precious Metals. That particular variety, you got to see me try a new thing. I'm always experimenting, and so that was the frost cloth method. Uh, one of the other benefits I don't think I shared about the frost cloth method is that you soak that frost cloth down and it keeps your soil moist, which is what seedlings need, consistent moist soil to germinate. And sometimes in our environment, when I put seeds in the ground and I'll water them every day, but boy, if the temperatures really spike here, sometimes those seedlings can dry out by the end of the day. So sometimes I have to come out and water in where I sowed that seed a couple of times a day. And, you know, I have things on drip irrigation, but I don't run my drip every day. So that's my plan. We'll see how this adventure turns out and this experiment comparing how easy it is to germinate with the frost cloth method for my zinnias versus just like I typically would by watering in everything each day by hand to keep that soil moist until those seeds germinate. Thank you so much for coming along today on another Garden Time with Bell adventure. I really appreciate it. If you enjoyed something that I shared with you today, please like and subscribe. And as always, happy gardening.